So you have actually seen a few pseudo classes before. Mostly we've used them when it comes to links. So for example, we've used a colon hover to perhaps add underlining to a link when it's hovered over, just like that. But there's a lot more we can do than just style links. We can also style inputs when they're focused. So for example, I might change the background color to blue when my input comes under focus. Let's see how that works out. So there's my input and clicking on it then will turn it blue. While we're on form elements, we can also style form elements on the basis of whether they're enabled or disabled. So I won't show you an example this time, but you get the idea. So normally they're faded out by the browser if they're disabled. We might want to change that in some way and we can use this pseudo selector to select all disabled inputs and style them in some way. We can even look at checkboxes or radio elements and style them in a certain way when they're checked. So that's a way of selecting form elements based on their status, but we can also select elements based on their location. And one common way of selecting elements is using first child. So this actually replicates something that we saw in the previous video, and it enables us to select the first paragraph in each of their containing elements. So in this case, the first paragraph in each div. So if we add another color to that, let's go for that lovely aquamarine, then only the paragraphs that are the first element will be selected. We can do the same with last child. So let's make that one bigger again. Here's a question for you. Will that match any element here in our page? The answer is yes, it will match this one because it's both the first child and the last child. So it will be bigger and aquamarine. And of course, if I move this paragraph to the end of that div, it will match that one too. The other setup here is we can look at only child and maybe we'll make that one bold and that one as you can imagine will style the elements which are the only element within their container so in this case once again it's that one notice that the first child doesn't select this paragraph here even though it's the first paragraph within the div because it's not the first element within the div so if we wanted to select the first paragraph, regardless of where it was, we can use first of type. And let's underline that one. So this will then underline all three of those because they're all the first of their type in their container. So notice that selected this one as well, because it's the first of its type in the body element. Even though there are paragraph tags that come before it, they're not directly inside the body, so they don't count. We can also use, as you might imagine, last of type and only of type. To select the last of each type in the container and the only of type in the container as well. I'm sure you can imagine how those work so I'll leave that as a comment. Now here we're going to get really fancy and we can select 
for example, if we look at a table row, we could select every other table row using nth child. And the rule is for nth child, you have to provide your rule. So now you're going to need some maths for this, I'm afraid. But if you want to select every other row, then your statement would be 2n because you're selecting rows 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. If you wanted to select every other row starting at the first one, you could use 2n minus 1. And that would then select 1, 3, 5, etc. So let's just quickly see that in action. If we make ourselves a table, and then a table row, it's not going to be a table full of me, it's going to be my usual suspects. There we go, and then if we wanted to make every other one to have a green background. That's how we do it. There we go. So it's particularly useful for styling things like lists or tables where you want to separate out the item from the one below. There's a couple of other options here as well. You can use nth last child and that will then count backwards. So instead of counting from the first to the last, it will count from the last back to the first. Similarly, you can use nth of type to only count the elements of that type. So for example here, if we were doing the selecting within this div, nth of type would only select the p's, whereas nth child itself looks at all of the children regardless of their type. Usually that's not an issue because we're looking at either table rows or list items or something like that, so they're not interspersed with other elements. But if they were, then you could use that instead. Okay, a few more for you. First off, we could select all the empty divs. So we might want, for example, to just hide them so that there's no styling showed if they don't have any content. We can use the not pseudo selector to select, for example, all the paragraphs that are not of a class of green. Or maybe we want to make those blue. There we go. And we could use the pseudo selector on its own to select, say, everything that's not a div. Okay, your brain is probably exploding with pseudo classes right now, but I'll just show you a couple more things that we can do. And one of those is to select the first letter of each, say, paragraph. And maybe you want to make that a little bit bigger. And that will then select just the first letter. We can also use first line. And we're almost there. The last pseudo selector I want to show you is actually a pseudo element, which is essentially some content or styles that we can create at the end of an element. So for example, if we wanted the link location to appear after every link in our code, and I'll just add an href here so we get the idea. Let's use that. We can use a colon after to add some content, and this could even be something like this is a link and if we look at that you see it's added that content there or we could create some dynamic content by putting 
ATTR for attribute and then href. And that will then put the actual link itself after that link. To make it make a bit more sense, you might want to put this in brackets and perhaps add a space. So that it reads better. You could even style that part of it different by putting the styles in here if you want to. So I think that's probably enough for you to recall for now. It's hopefully given you an idea of all the different ways that we can select objects using pseudo selectors. You can always come back to this point as a reference. You don't need to keep all of these in your head, but it's good to know that they're available when you find yourself needing something like that while building a website. Okay, if all of that was a little bit dry for you, we're going to look at something a bit more visual now, and that is gradients and shadows.